has Stuart Haas Racing found their Eric Almirola replacement for 2024? According to Bob Pockers, Noah Gragson could be headed to Stuart Haas Racing on the Cup Series side in 2024 to replace Eric Almirola as he looks to exit the team, whether that's through retirement, another team, unlikely in the Cup Series, or a step down to the Xfinity Series, which honestly does make a lot of sense. Either way, Noah Gragson's name has been mentioned to this car, and this is the first time I think anybody's heard about it, so Bob's just out here dropping news on Door Bumper Clear this week, but it does make a little bit of sense outside of the fact that it doesn't make sense from one big standpoint. Ford famously blocked Stuart Haas Racing from signing Kyle Larson after he made his racial remark in 2020. They didn't want Stuart Haas Racing to sign him, which in result, SHR passed on him. He ended up going to Hendrick Motorsports, wins the championship, has won a bunch of races in the meantime, and Stuart Haas Racing has continued this meteoric nosedive into the ground. So unless Ford has relaxed their stance on racial remarks, because Noah Graxon, as we know, was just suspended for liking a racially insensitive meme on Instagram, it doesn't feel like that they have relaxed them. And if they do, it's a weird spot to draw the line because Kyle Larson is exponentially a better driver than Noah Gragson. Noah Gragson has upside for sure. We know he can win races, especially in the Xfinity series. But to take a flyer on a guy like Noah Gragson while you pass on a guy like Kyle Larson doesn't make a lot of sense. Unless they're feeling pressured because they've lost another one of their top prospects in Zane Smith as he heads over to the Chevy camp in 2024 with Trackhouse and Spire. And their pipeline right now consists of Haley Deegan and Frankie Muniz. Not exactly the uh, gauntlet of, of prospects here. So maybe they're like, we got to take a chance on a guy like Noah Gragson. It's that. Or Stuart Haas Racing has just gone completely rogue because they know 2024 will be their last season as a Ford team. They just went all cold trickle on everybody and they decided to do it their own way. Which honestly wouldn't shock myself or really anybody included because more than likely if they do leave Ford as a manufacturer for 2025 sometime early on in 2024 it will be announced that they're switching to whether it's going to be Chevy or Toyota and it doesn't feel like their Ford ties are as strong as they used to be they all still do the Ford sponsorship they all have contracts and they all will obviously abide by those because people want to get paid but at the end of the day, it feels like something is off there. So maybe Tony Stewart just went completely rogue. And he's like, you know what? I'm signing this guy because I think he can go out there and be successful versus taking a guy that has some sponsorship, whether that's a Riley Herbst or, well, really just Riley Herbst or Cole Custer promoting him back up from the Xfinity series. Noah does bring a bit of money with him as well. I don't think anybody realizes it's cup level of money. Unless Stuart Haas Racing's like, we're going to take whatever we can get at this point. SHR famously struggles to attract sponsorship, right? Uh, Gene Haas sponsors two of those cars more often than not. Kevin Harvick brought a ton of his own sponsorships with him with, through KHI. Chase Briscoe as well. He does have a full season of sponsorship made up of multiple different partners. But the other cars do seem to struggle to attract it. So if Noah's bringing some along with him, SHR's like, well, maybe we'll take that and try to piecemeal the rest of it together, which honestly might be their best approach versus taking a guy that isn't going to perform well at all. Tony Stewart said he wasn't going to just hire a rich kid whose dad wrote a check and put him into a cup car. Yeah. Noah had a tumultuous rookie season though with Legacy Motor Club, one that ended after only 21 races. And people are going to say that they just used him liking a racially insensitive meme on Instagram as a reason to get rid of him. And that's not really the case. They were always going to get rid of Noah Gragson at the end of the year. Him doing that and it becoming public just allowed them to speed up that timeline and both parties to go their separate ways earlier than they would have. John Hunter Nemechek was always going to get that ride once they switch over to Toyota. It makes, uh, it makes more sense to have John Hunter in that car than it does Noah Gragson. And Noah had an absolutely abysmal rookie season. In 21 races, he had an average start of 26.2, an average finish of 28.2, and he was only on the lead lap in four of those 21 races. Zero top tens and zero top fives as well. And it does not look like a very good rookie season, especially when Carson Hosovar can get in that car and run incredibly competitive uh, with that same equipment, and your teammate Eric Jones, especially in the second half of the year here, has really taken off and has contended for wins, or at least the lead of races, as the season's progressed. So for Noah Gragson, that's a really bad look, especially, and I know a lot of people don't pay a ton of attention to, to the stats, but having a two-spot drop in your finishing from where you started, 
that's not what you want to see. You'd obviously like to see it go the other direction, especially where he's averaging his start, which was around 26.2. You can only go back 10 more positions on most weekends. You'd like to see him move up a little bit more. But outside of just running poorly, he got a concussion. He gave himself a weird haircut. And, you know, he was in contention for the win at Talladega, so I guess he can always hold on to that. But ultimately, it was a very forgettable rookie, well, half-rookie season for Noah Gragson. And maybe Stuart Haas Racing needs a guy like Noah Gragson. He's got the irrational confidence of a Kendall Roy. And Stuart Haas Racing, they don't really have a guy, a lot of guys over there that have a ton of outward confidence, at least. Ryan Priest, he's a grinder. He's going to go out there and get the job done. Chase Briscoe's a really quiet, kind of seems like a weird guy, but he's fast on some weekends. Uh, he will go out there and get his nose a little bit dirty, rough everybody up, spin people out, and then be like, hey, I don't like to race that way, but I kind of just do it all the time. And then you have Josh Berry, another guy, a lot like Ryan Priest. He's an absolute grinder. He's been at this for the better part of a decade trying to make it to this level, and he's finally made it. A bunch of working class type of guys over here. Noah Gragson, of course, is not necessarily a working class kind of guy, but he is a guy that has obviously had a setback in his career now, and maybe Stuart Haas Racing is just banking on him being hungry and wanting to go out there and try to compete and uh, win races. So that's an approach that they could take. SHR, though, desperately needs to find a replacement for Eric Almarola and the money that will be leaving the team with Smithfield. Smithfield writes a big check every single year uh, for Eric Almarola to be in that car, and Stuart Haas Racing has been lining their pockets with it. Maybe they're even using that to subsidize some of their other rides. It's a lot like when Danica Patrick was there. You try to have three competitive cars, and then you have another car that somebody's paying to be in to try to subsidize the rest of the company. Smithfield leaves. They're losing a big big chunk of money, probably better part of 15 to $18 million a season right there. No, Gragson's not bringing 15 to $18 million a year with him, but he will potentially help try to stop gap some of what Smithfield is taking away. Almirola and Smithfield were both noticeably absent from Stuart Haas Racing Sponsorship Summit, which has led a lot of people to think that they are definitely out at the end of the year, whether again, it's through retirement or moving on to a different opportunity. Noah Gragson being mentioned for this Stuart Haas ride, though, kind of feels like it comes out of left field. His name kept getting mentioned with the Colleague Xfinity rides, um, not so much on the cup side for them. They've already got their cup deal apparently figured out. They just won't announce it, even though it feels like everybody already knows. Uh, but on the Xfinity side, it did feel like Noah was going to go there. He can win in that Colleague equipment, and it made a lot of sense that that's where he was going to end up at. Now, of course, if he ends up at Stuart Haas Racing, Colleague's got to go back and try to figure out what they're doing over there. Uh, for their Xfinity program. Either way, Silly Season is still in full swing. We still have to figure out who's driving the number 16 car in the Cup Series next year, Ty Dillon, the number 77 car for Spire, Carson Hosvar, which will likely be announced on Tuesday night, and the number 10 car, Stuart Haas Racing, are all still open, and we still have a bunch of truck and Xfinity rides as well that need to be claimed. So, like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.